Hello geometry students, welcome to the lesson for 10.4. And we're going to be using the theorems, theorems 10.12 to 10.14 to determine the measure of some different arcs. There's no real new vocabulary in this one, just those new theorems. And so make sure you're using those extra examples in the book. I'm going to be pointing out some of those extra examples as well. This, to start off, is theorem 10.12. So this is theorem 10.12. I want you to uh, take some coins out if you have those, something like that. We're drawing lots of circles in this chapter. Draw a decent sized circle, so maybe quarter size, something like that. Quarter size, half dollar size. And then I want you to draw a tangent line towards the bottom. So tangent line, something like that. Put some arrows on there. <clears throat> And then let's label some points. One more line, though. Sorry, I forgot to do that. I want to draw, it's actually a chord here. I want to draw a chord from the tangent point to some point in the circle right about there is where I'll put mine. We're going to call this point B, where that intersection is. I'm going to pick just some random spot along this major arc that I've formed right there. I'm going to call that C. This I'm going to call angle 2. I'm saying excuse me, I'm saying this, this whole thing from here all the way to there is angle 2. That's going to be point A, where the tangent point is. Let's write that next to that point. That's the next to that letter. That's the tangent point right here. And this is going to be angle 1 right there. It's an ugly looking 1. Let's make that a little nicer. It's angle 1. Still ugly. Anyways, that's angle 1. So the measure of angle 1, this is based on the same sort of thing that we saw in the last lesson in 10.3. It's based on that one half idea. It's half as much the arc to the angle. The angle is half as big as the arc. The arc is twice as big as the, the angle is another way to think of that. So the measure of angle 1 is going to be one half the measure of minor arc AB. And the measure of angle 2 is going to be one half the measure of major arc A C B or B C A. You could say that either way. I think the book calls it B C A, so I'll just keep it consistent with the book. Um, but B C A would be the same thing as A C B going around in the other direction. Okay, there we go. That's B C A. So these are the big things to know there. I think the easier way to think about it is just like this though. So I'll get out a different color at this point and think of it like this. As you're going from the angle to the arc, it's times two. And as you're going back from the arc to the angle, divide by two. Same sort of thing if we're doing one to there, one to the to there to the arc times two. If you're going back in from the arc to the angle, you're gonna divide by two. Okay, so going out to the arc times 2, going back to the angle, divide by 2. If you're given the arc, divide by 2 to get the angle. If you're given the angle, multiply by 2 to get the arc. And let's do an example from there. So I'll draw another quarter, half dollar size circle. We'll put that right here. We'll use a theorem that we just saw. Draw a tangent line in there. This is going to be point U. R is the tangent point, so R is that point right there. I'm going to say that S is going to be a point kind of off to there, off to the side there. Let's draw in from the tangent point to there. I'm going to call this point T down here. And I'm going to say that this whole angle from here, from the line itself all the way to that segment right here, that chord right there, is 102 degrees. And if I asked you to find the measure of RST, that arc, think about what we just talked about back here. If you're going from the angle out to the arc, multiply by 2. If you know the arc measurement and you're trying to find the angle measurement, that's when you divide by 2. So this one, you're going from the angle to the arc. You have larger than half of the circle is another good way to kind of 
verify your answer, you can see that this arc is more than half of the circle. So your answer should be more than 180. That can remind you of whether to multiply or divide by 2 as well. But this one is going to be 102 times 2, which would be 204. And let's do, let's just write this in parentheses, uh, just as a kind of a side example, where let's suppose now this wasn't true, that this wasn't 102, and, and if the measure of RT, sorry, let's put measure of arc RT, don't forget your little arc marks, if it was 160, then them, then Blech. Blech. Ugh. Gross. Then the measure of angle TRU would be 160 divided by 2, which would be 80. So that's just kind of a, an example within the example, assuming that this wasn't true. If this was true, then that would be the case too. So think of it like that going from the arc now back to the angle if that was the case that would be what that is so really no different than the 10.3 notes except now we just have this tangent point instead of an inscribed angle now theorem 10.13 looks like this 10.13 and then 10.14 we're going to draw all these theorems out in full because these ones are are pretty important to know so if lines intersect, pretty important to know, and not totally intuitive either, like some of the theorems we've seen in this chapter. If lines intersect inside the circle, that has to be true. So inside, very important. If lines intersect inside the circle, I want a circle. There we go. Circle. Another quarter, half dollar circle size. And I want you to draw some lines, some segments, chords that intersect inside the circle. Let's make it look something like, like that. I'm going to call this angle 1 and this angle 2 right there. And then in your different color, I want you to go over this part, or this arc from here to here. Highlight over that. And highlight over this part right here. And let's give these points of interest some labels A, B, C, and D. So this is theorem 1013. This would be true. Measure of angle 1 would equal, to me this is not intuitive. It would take a little bit to prove. We're not going to prove it. We're just going to accept it. Um, but you could prove this is actually true. Uh, but measure of angle 1 would equal 1 half of these two red arcs, these two minor arcs, the measure of CD plus the measure of AB. In other words, you add two things together and divide by two, that's the average. It's the average of these two arcs, the average of those two arcs. And then the measure of angle two would be the same idea the average now of these two arcs instead, BC and AD. So it's the average of BC and AD. And let's put that off to the side here. That it's just the average of the intersected arcs think of it like that and I think it makes it really easy to remember so the average of the intersected arcs is all that that is and then theorem 1014 is a 3 in 1 type theorem uh, let's make some lines some vertical lines here theorem 1014 is going to have three separate parts to it Theorem 1014. This is if lines 
intersect outside now, outside the circle. Theorem 10, 14 is if they intersect inside. Theorem 10, 12 is kind of if they intersect right on the circle. So outside the circle. You might have three different types of situations going on. So you could have, let's draw three circles, quarter, half dollar size circles once again. There, this one I'm going to put more towards the edge of the line that I've drawn. This one kind of in the middle. And then draw the lines that you see here. This one's going to have one tangent line and one non tangent line, one secant line that goes through the circle. This one will have two tangent lines. And this one will have no tangent lines. We'll have two secant lines. So you've got your options. E. E. You've got one tangent, two tangents, no tangents. That's the order the book puts them in. So that's the order I put them in here. This is one tangent. Let's put that in in a different color. One tangent. This one is two tangents. And this one is no tangents, zero tangents. Now yes, this will get split into three different parts, but they're all basically the same idea. And so if you can remember the one idea, you can remember all these things. When you have it inside the circle, it's going to be a plus sign. When you have it outside the circle, it's going to be a minus sign instead. This is going to be called, we'll call this A, B, and C down here, the tangent point. Let's call this angle 1. Let's call this angle 2. Let's call this one angle 3. This is W, this is Z, X, and Y. We're going to call this P. Q is just some old point on the major arc part here, and this is R. Okay, so the measure of angle one and this one think of it as well it intersects this part here I want you to think of it as this sort of idea so we've got this arc the big arc minus the small arc it's the half of the big arc minus the small arc in each one of these cases so it's half of the big arc which is a measure of BC here in this case minus the small arc AC this one, same idea, the measure of 2 is half of the big arc, which would be the major arc, P, Q, R, minus the minor arc, P, R. And this one, the measure of angle 3, is going to equal half of the bigger arc, which would be X, Y, minus the smaller arc, W, Z. And so that's how I really want you to think of this. It makes it a lot easier to think about it that way. So let's make a little notation about all these. All are just half of the big, bigger arc minus the smaller arc. If you can remember that, you got this down. Half of the bigger arc minus the smaller arc. So let's check out another example. Before I do that though, I want to add one little note up here. We're going to look at it together, but I'm not going to have you write it down or do an example like this together to save our, ourselves a little bit of time in this video here. I think we can just look at this one nod our heads in approval and say, yep, yep, that makes sense, okay? So uh, see example 3 on page 2, 622 for a theorem 10, 13 example. So let's take a look at that briefly together here. 10, 13 was where they intersect inside the circle. It's the average of the two arcs. It's the average of the two arcs. So we take a look at example 3. There it is. 
notice here that I was saying find x x intercepts this arc and then the vertical angle part intersects this part so ps and qr what's half of ps measure ps plus measure of qr half of that would be 106 plus 174 ends up being 280 and 280 times one half half of 280 is 140 and so this would be 140 degrees and that seems reasonable because it's it seems like it's halfway in between these two values as well so think about that use that to help you if you're doing one similar to that well, let's do one together where we use theorem 1014 one of these three situations will be utilized or called upon uh, in this problem here so see if you can recognize even before I say which one we're using see if you can recognize which one of the three which of the three options we're going to be using here so I'll draw a decent sized circle we're going to draw a couple lines there are going to be no tangent lines in this case so a couple of secants let's draw it like that something like that and like this I want you to write in some values here this is going to be C A M and P I love camping so I decided to, to put camp in there and then we'll say there's a T I see a T right here do you see the T right here an upside down T uh -huh. so yeah no I just had to come up with another letter and T it was uh, but let's say this is X degrees I'm talking or referring to this arc right here and let's say that this is a hundred degrees just like when we put or label segments with their measures you're gonna put something like that there uh, mm, nope somebody was at the door go away person at the door I'm recording I'm busy uh, okay so X degrees 100 degrees and let's say this one right here is 28 degrees so how can we figure out the measure of X if this was straightforward given to me here and here we would just be using the theorem right here this part and saying that it's the big arc minus the small arc it's half of that we still use the same formula though the same idea is going to hold but we're going to say now think of it like this using theorem 1014 and we'll say part three to that theorem because it's the third part there it's this one instead of these two but the idea is the same it's half of the big arc minus the small arc we're going to be saying that the measure of angle CTA that measure right there you could just say angle T on this one because it's clear that T is has to be this angle right here but let's use three letters instead we'll say is one half of the big arc the measure of MP minus the small arc the measure of CA or AC. You could say PM instead of MP, just like you can switch the order of the letters with segments. You can do that too with arcs. And so this is going to be now, what is the measure of CTA? I know that value. It's right here. It's 28. So I'm going to plug in that value right there is 28. Do I know the measure of MP? I sure do. That's 100. So I'm going to plug in 100. Do I know the measure of AC? No, that's what I'm trying to figure out. I'm calling that X. Okay, so you're going to see more straightforward ones sometimes in your classwork, in the test maybe as well. And then the other ones, you might have to think of it like this. Plug in the numbers you know and solve for the variable. Solve for what you don't know. Think of this. I think most easily being done is to, to take the whole thing, get rid of the fraction first. You can take everything here put this in a different color for me please you can multiply the whole side by two if I'm gonna do that over here I have to do the same thing over here so I have to multiply this whole side by two the two times the one half will cancel here and here and I'm not distributing it into both parts it's this times this times this so two times one half would just give me one therefore those two things would cancel out I'd just be left with a hundred minus x so I think that's the easiest way to think of it you would have 56 equals a hundred minus x if you subtracted 100, yeah, you would have a negative x, but that's okay. We can get rid of that by just dividing by a negative 1. It's like there's an invisible and invisible 1 right there. So that x is going to equal 44. 
I want you to make a couple of final notes here. Four more. You might want to see more like this. This one, these ones are a little trickier. Uh, if you feel like you want to see more like that, I'll show you where this is in the book in just a moment. For more like this, though, see example four on page 623. Write that down for me. And then we'll look at example five on page 623 as well together briefly, and then we'll call it a day here. So example four, you've got a couple more like this. I did one where I had no tangents. So here they did one where they have one tangent right here. And then they did one where they have two tangents right here instead. So check these out in your book if you want some extra help with those problems. In example five, Mount Rainier, I've actually been not on the top, but I've walked around a lot of Mount Rainier. Incredibly beautiful there in Washington. You can actually use an idea like this to figure out how, uh, how much of the earth you can see from the top of a mountain. Uh, so assuming that the rest is totally flat, that's kind of a a big assumption there, um, but assuming that this was at sea level and this was at sea level, what could you actually see? What part of the Earth? And apparently, according to this, if you work this out, 4.2 percent of the Earth, an arc of 4 percent of the Earth, you could see from the top of Mount Rainier. Pretty cool that this can apply to something like that. All right, that'll do it for us here with this lesson. Let me know in class if you had any questions.